to day 21 in our 23-day journey with God. I'm Kenton Kober, and before we jump into today's devotional on the holiness of God, let's take a moment and read this passage from Isaiah 6. Today we are discussing the holiness of God, and this passage is one of the go-to passages when it comes to thinking about God's holiness. Here's the scene. Isaiah goes into the temple and encounters God. Isaiah sees him seated on a throne, surrounded by seraphim who are perpetually worshiping him. And what are the lyrics they're singing? Holy, 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 Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. And it was awesome. So much so that the doorposts and threshold shook and the room filled with smoke. The holiness of God refers to the absolute moral purity of God and also the absolute moral distance between God and his human creatures. It is a description of God repeated in a threefold formula, a literary device to bring great emphasis. God is not just a little bit holy. God is really, really, really holy. This served to remind Israel in the original context, and us today, that God's holiness is a matter of enormous spiritual significance. It also serves as a warning that we as humans are not holy. Holiness is a central marker of the fundamental divide between God and sinful human creature, most especially in their fallen condition, but also in the redeemed state entirely dependent upon God for any holiness that might reside in him. In response to everything Isaiah experiences, he says, Woe is me, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell with people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. When confronted with the holiness of God, Isaiah comes to the obvious and immediate realization that Isaiah is not holy. Isaiah knew the story of Moses and that God said no one can stand to look upon God. Moses hid as God passed by, and here Isaiah was in the presence of holy God in a brightness that exposed his sinfulness in plain sight, and Isaiah was sure he was done for. Like Isaiah, until we have seen ourselves in the light of God's holiness, we will not fully understand our total unholiness. What did Isaiah do when confronted with the holiness of God? He confessed. And as the story continues, one of the seraphim brings a hot coal and puts it on his lips to purify them and says, your guilt is taken away and your sins are atoned for. And this is the example for us. We approach a holy God and discover that our holiness should be a byproduct of the encounter. God says, be holy for I am holy. He doesn't say be as holy as I am holy. That level of holiness is reserved for God. We are to pursue holiness, but any holiness we can have can only reflect and come from God. Like Isaiah, God desires from us a broken and contrite heart. Like Moses in the cleft of the rock, when confronted by God's holiness, our unholiness is hidden in the wounds of Christ. We must take refuge in God. And most of all, we believe that God sees us perfect in his Son. Thanks again for joining us on day 21. And as you go throughout your day today, try to remember and bask in God's holiness. And also remember, as the opportunity arises, to be able to experience and express holiness to those around you.